So, uh, good afternoon to all the uh, viewers of this two-week program. Uh, so, this uh, today's lecture will be on uh, the applications of machine learning or fine-scale mapping of the vegetation. And before uh, going to the applications of machine learning, we will just see how uh, the uh, the attempts were uh, made to map or the, to classify the vegetation across the globe from the global, uh, regional, and the local level. So this uh, diagram basically uh, reflects uh, uh, the hierarchy of natural vegetation according to the international uh, vegetation classification, the, the recent one. And according to that, uh, this, uh, this figure represents the vegetation hierarchy from the global to the local level. So in the uh, upper three class, you can see uh, those are uh, among these eight uh, ne uh, level natural vegetation hierarchy. So physiognomy is an important ecological context at upper level and which increasingly uh, integrate the biogeography and the floristics at the lo uh, lower uh, levels. So these upper levels of the hierarchy are based on the dominant and the diagnostic growth forms and the macroecology that works on the larger scales like latitude or the uh, elevation gradients. Uh, if you see the middle levels, uh, those are uh, basically the classified by biogeography, the dominant growth forms uh, and the diagnostic growth forms, plus the regional mesoecological differences. So that are also from the global to the continent uh, uh, scales. The lower level, those are the alliance and associations are based on the diagnostic and dominant species and the compositional similarity between uh, those groups or stratum uh, that are uh, reflecting the similarity at the local to the regional environmental conditions. So, in, the, in a scale of uh, from uh, coarser to finer, you will see that uh, the larger the classes, where the physiognomy uh, uh, is important uh, in the consideration, those are works at very larger scale. And at finer scale uh, classification, as well as the mapping of the vegetation, we have to consider the floristics more and the local environmental conditions. So in case of the biodiversity uh, conservation and the prioritization, because uh, the management practices, they work more on the uh, local scales. So the finer scale, the classified vegetation uh, uh, types or units are more important when we consider the biodiversity conservation and uh, the conservation prioritization. So in this, the formation are uh, uh, basically the community type defined by dominance of given growth forms in the uppermost stratum or the uppermost closed uh, stratum of the community or by the combination of the different growth forms. And the physiognomy, as you know, it, it is the visible structure or the outward appearance of the plant community as expressed by the dominant growth forms, such as their leaf appearance or the type of uh, those vegetation like deciduous, uh, ever, evergreen or needle-leaved. So based on those, uh, the physiognomy is uh, defined. So the earlier uh, uh, these uh, classifications, if you see, or the mapping attempts were based on the some of the earlier concepts like the Holdridge life zone that proposed in 1947, and they consider the precipitation, uh, bio temperature, and the potential evapotranspiration as a basic uh, parameters to uh, to define the vegetations across the globe. So according to these three components, the vegetations were uh, classified uh, at different scales. And another one is this Whitaker's uh, biome system. So this is very uh, well-known uh, concept, uh, well uh, discussed. And in this, uh, you will see uh, the temperature and precipitations were the prime, uh, the factors in the consideration and based on the combinations of these two factors, the vegetations of the globes were uh, uh, divided into different biomes like tundra, taiga, or temperate, or the deserts or the tropical rainforest, etc. 
so these were the earlier attempts uh, of the uh, mapping of uh, or the classification of the vegetation from the uh, global level here you can see in the if you see the biome level classifications or the mapping of the uh, global vegetation in the indian parts you will see eight or ten different biomes uh, like uh, subtropical uh, uh, these dry deciduous or uh, uh, other vegetation uh, in the western cars or the eastern in indian region like uh, tropical rainforest so these are the dominant when according if you see the larger scales of the classification and uh, this is the example of when uh, the study is considered hold rich life uh, zones and in the part of the united states of uh, america these these many numbers of vegetation uh, types uh, were classified according to hold rich zone so the parameters were more in uh, this condi uh, conditions and the vegetation types or the classes were more in the hold rich life zone so if you see the earliest example of vegetation classification in the india the swine first uh, uh, attempts of classifying the himalayan vegetation according to elevation and the latitude was one of the most important example then later you will see the champion and seeds classification where they took different uh, parameters to uh, group the vegetation into major groups type groups and further the forest types for uh, the country so this is uh, this example is one of the attempts that uh, the vegetation were uh, not only classified but also mapped uh, for the regional level for the entire himalayan uh, scale uh, according uh, following the swine path champion set and the the classification proposed by mani so these are basically broad uh, level uh, vegetation units these were classified and mapped so but if you see the remote sensing perspectives on the uh, the classification and the mapping of the vegetation it is now widely recognized that this biodiversity uh, is a multi dimensional and multi scale phenomena so it is from uh, from genetic level to the landscape level so it it differ, differs in organization level and a wide range of special skills also so inf information obtained from the remote sensing is multi dimensional basically so it is uh, multi dimensional in terms of the vertical dimension temporal and the spect spectral uh, dimension of the information that we captured from the remote sensing and it may cover the special scale from the centimeter to the entire continent so this in, uh, special information on distribution composition and the condition of biodiversity element of different ecosystem at appropriate special scale is essential to support the management of these ecosystems and their biodiversity so this diagram basically depicts the temporal and the special hierarchical organization of the biodiversity elements and the appropriate image special resolution required to characterize these elements so for a leaf level uh, you will need very high temporal and very high spatial resolution data because this is highly dynamic and it changes at very rapid scale rapid time and if you uh, increase or the uh, increase the extent of uh, the area then the changes will occur uh, uh, over a very longer time and the uh, the data with low spatial and low temporal scale that will work for studying the landscape level uh, uh, changes in the biodiversity as compared to the tree structure or the tree community so more uh, our scale increases so we will need uh, the longer duration data sets and at study in the canopy level or the leaf structure level we will need very high temporal and very high resolution data so this is one of the example the how this the vegetation type uh, mapping and classification advanced in india so earlier we in irs we have one large project that is biodiversity uh, characterization at landscape level and uh, in this image uh, you can see uh, these different season image 
So one is the wet season image and another one is the dry season image. So in the wet season image, you, you can see the uh, large part of the vegetated area looks in a similar appearance. So similar tone because that most of the vegetation in the green conditions. And as compared to the dry season here, you can see that you can uh, differentiate the evergreens from the, the deciduous components. So two different season uh, images were uh, used and the special database on vegetation types were generated using wet and dry season satellite imagery. And the ancillary data that supports uh, such as the topographic maps or species richness through field inventory. The large scale study was conducted in the entire country and you can see the different the ground sample points. So, so almost 17,000 ground sample plots were laid to uh, uh, map the vegetation of the uh, entire country. And this study was first attempt which resulted in a special database on vegetation types, not only vegetation types, but also the porosity, patchiness, interdispersion, fragmentation, and the biological richness. So all uh, those uh, maps or the database were generated from that study. So in this, you can see the vegetation type map of uh, India. So the techniques were used was uh, more uh, the visual image interpretation. So using the uh, different season image, so the uh, different vegetation elements were interpreted and the, the tonal variation was very important to uh, differentiate different vegetation type over a uh, region and the different landscape level uh, classification uh, were further mosaic to uh, generate the countrywide project. So this seamless vegetation map, map of entire country represents uh, around 100 vegetation classes and this was one of the most used database on the vegetation map which is basically a baseline information about the distribution of vegetation and the richness of species richness all over the country and useful for prioritization of various biological richness hotspots and monitoring the plot level information for future biodiversity changes, predictive modeling, corridor modeling. So this was one of the highly used data set that was generated through the field level study. So now come to the, the advanced uh, machine learning tools because with uh, advancement in the remote sensing sensors and the availability of the, the higher resolution data, the traditional uh, the classifiers were not so uh, much uh, useful or the efficient to handle the large data sets so these machine learning tools were evolved over the period of time and this is basically a subfield of artificial intelligence and uh, that gives a computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed so the computer learns and uh, it improves if its performance at some task when with the experience so excuse me. So there are basically three types of uh, the uh, machine learning algorithms and uh, those are available. Uh, one is the supervised, and that is the also known as the task driven, and then the unsupervised uh, data driven, and the, the recent one uh, that is developing is the uh, reinforced learning. So this is basically learn from the mistakes. So as uh, this uh, term also uh, depicts that the algorithm is first given the uh, right answers to learn and then it uses the uh, those uh, training and data sets to predict the outputs. So in case of unsupervised, it groups basically the input data sets into different clusters. So later on, uh, you can label those clusters according to your uh, questions. So this supervised one is useful in the classification and the regression because uh, you label the, uh, the data and then the algorithm work on uh, the, these data sets and it basically uh, the classify or do the regression analysis between different data sets and it uh, uh, generates the outputs. And this, the reinforced uh, this 
uh, and this learning it basically enables an agent to learn through the consequences of actions in a specific environment so it basically learns from the the experience as it uh, uh, more used in the uh, robotics the games or automated recommendation uh, like for example if you see uh, once you see any uh, video in uh, youtube so later on you uh, you see that there are different <coughs> recommendation appears on the screens because uh, the algorithms those works on that it detects uh, the your choice and it uh, uh, the recommends what you will like later on so these are the basic uh, types of machine learning uh, machine learning algorithms and these are the examples some uh, like uh, neural networks decision tree support vector machine and Neb Bayesian classifiers are the example of the supervised uh, machine learning algorithm. So then the K-means PCA, which basically works on the the clustering uh, of the data sets. So those are the unsupervised, and these are the Q-learning or the Monte Carlo-based algorithm, which basically works as a reinforced uh, learning. So. Uh, we will see because uh, uh, we have uh, some examples uh, here we worked on these uh, uh, machine learning uh, tools and we will see more detail on some of the algorithm which uh, were used in classifying and mapping the vegetation at very uh, fine scale so one of the algorithm is the uh, random forest which are highly used uh, in the uh, classification basically classification purposes and it is a supervised uh, learning algorithm as mentioned earlier uh, which is used both for classification as well as the regression so it creates the uh, decision trees uh, or the sample data sets so a decision tree is simple uh, tree like structure which uh, basically constitutes nodes and the branches so the, the input data it, it, it uh, splits based on any of the input features such as at each node generating two or more branches as a output so this iterative uh, process increases the number of generated branches and uh, the partitions the original data so this will con uh, con continue uh, and the nodes will generated where all the uh, or almost all of the data belong to the same class and it, uh, it cannot further uh, uh, split so it will uh, divide those all the data sets uh, with the hundreds of iterations and until there is no further uh, splitting is possible so it will generate the hundreds of these uh, decision trees and based on the uh, voting so basically if you see a simple example here uh, of a tree uh, it appears there are two uh, different colors in this uh, data set and if you further ex ex uh, split it so you you can divide into red and the blue but here some are uh, some of the digits are with the underlines also so further you can split into underline red or the uh, the zero which is of a uh, same color so this is the uh, final branch and this is the uh, root node for this uh, decision tree uh, but in the in case of random forest it uh, generates uh, the a forest of these uh, decision trees so uh, and each and these tree uh, predicts uh, uh, a class so based on the votings the maximum here in case you can see uh, this tree predicts one and this zero then predicts one further one one so the majority of votes is towards the prediction one so this the data set that uh, trained for uh, a particular uh, class uh, on the remote sensing imagery will finally predict the uh, the class one for a pixel that is under the uh, in the satellite uh, that imagery or the data set so uh, the another example to understand this is uh, the example of the simple uh, decision tree where uh, some values of different uh, remote sensing imagery bands are provided and it is uh, the first root node will further split uh, uh, as a uh, single tree 
But in case of the random forest classifier, here you can see one decision tree is here, then the another decision tree, then another decision tree. So these each tree will predict one uh, class uh, or assign uh, the label to the uh, particular decision tree, and based on the the prediction voting, the based on the majority of the votes, the final prediction will be made for a particular pixel on the image. So this is the random forest decision tree, and this is the uh, example of the simple decision tree. So uh, this is highly uh, efficient at uh, as this. Uh, uh, the random forest works on the majority of uh, boards and uh, it predicts uh, the uh, final output at very uh, accurately. So uh, with experiences uh, with the uh, advancement of the uh, remote sensing imagery and uh, their uh, spatial and spectral resolution, so it was found that this medium uh, resolution image had a mixed pixel effect and hence less sensitive to the complexity of the forest ecosystem. So as if you see the uh, one Im uh, image with uh, around 20 or 30 meter spatial resolution and we compare that image with a uh, finer uh, spatial resolution image like a five meter or further uh, higher resolution image, we found that uh, the because in the forest canopy, the tree canopy, you will see those are basically around 10 meter or uh, maximum you will see 15 meter of uh, that special, uh, the coverage will be uh, there for a community, uh, uh, the trees in a community. So we found that uh, a study with higher resolution imagery will be more important to characterize the biodiversity at a uh, community level and one and this project was initiated by uh, Department of Space and the Department of uh, Biotechnology, uh, known as Biodiversity Conservation uh, Characterization at community level. And uh, the major, uh, the aim of uh, this project is to special characterization of vegetation community using multi-sensor and multi-scale earth observation data and intensive field studies. So nine uh, sites here you can see were selected in the page one and one of the sites is in the Nandor uh, landscape in the foothills of Malia that uh, the IRS is uh, dealing with. And uh, so here uh, further uh, you can see uh, these are the two different season uh, imageries uh, here uh, presented and uh, in January month, you will see uh, the, uh, you can hardly differentiate the vegetation, uh, the evergreens uh, from the uh, deciduousness, but if you see the April month uh, image, uh, you can differentiate or you can identify the deciduous vegetation from the uh, evergreen, evergreen ones. So not only the tonal variation, but also uh, the spectrally they are uh, highly, uh, uh, discriminate, uh, discriminated. So here you can see in the uh, January, April and May months there the spectral uh, reflectance curve is uh, seen here. So uh, some uh, the vegetation or the communities uh, have different reflectance curve in the January, April and May months. So based on these, uh, the differentiation in their uh, spectral properties, these uh, algorithm uh, picks those uh, uh, values and they identify uh, different communities and uh, they accurately map these. So not only the uh, the band reflectances, but also you can you can see um, based on their vegetation indices, they are also uh, highly uh, uh, differentiable in some of the uh, vegetation indices like uh, the uh, green chlorophyll indices or uh, the NDVI. So if you take these uh, vegetation indices for different uh, seasons or different months, so then uh, these machine learning algorithms are able to handle these large data sets and multiple layers and they uh, predict more accurately these uh, communities on the ground. So uh, this is the one of the example that uh, generated uh, through the machine learning, uh, the random forest classification. So you can see these different 
and the community level classification was performed for this stretch uh, of the landscape and uh, uh, later on uh, that uh, the experience from the small scale studies were uh, expanded uh, for the entire uh, landscape uh, of the landscape uh, in the nandar area so here you can see uh, the landscape level uh, vegetation type map were generated and uh, at least 11 or 12 uh, vegetation communities were identified and mapped with very high uh, accuracy and if you compare this map with the earlier uh, attempts of uh, vegetation characterization at landscape level you will see these were uh, basically broad uh, patterns of uh, vegetation those were mapped at like degraded forest dry deciduous scrubs or dry deciduous forest riverine Uh, forest the broad physiognomic classes were uh, mapped in the earlier attempts now but with uh, the advancement in the remote sensing uh, data as well as the uh, machine learning algorithms we can uh, classify and map the vegetation communities at very fine uh, scale so this is uh, 10 meter resolution map uh, generated for the entire landscape so this landscape covers the nandar wildlife sanctuary and uh, outer area as well and these are very highly useful uh, maps because you will see uh, the very fine scale diversity patterns across the landscapes and you can identify the the corridors uh, of uh, the important corridors for the movement of the species and these are uh, also important for the inputs in the working plans and the uh, local level management plans because uh, though the conservation efforts are uh, basically more works at a, a local or the regional scale so these kind of maps are very uh, crucial for the conservation planning and the management of the landscapes so the another example uh, i will uh, share here is the uh, because the earlier this one is uh, for the the uh, tree communities uh, because this is uh, in the subtropical area and in the tri landscape so this is the example of the typical subalpine and alpine vegetation interface in the high altitude mountains these area are uh, highly uh, diverse and very high uh, biodiversity were found in the high altitudes of the himalayan region so this is one of the uh, area that depicts the the subalpine zone below then the alpine area above and the the subnival zone in the higher peaks so because these uh, landscapes are very highly heterogeneous uh, in terms of the local or the microclimatic conditions and those microclimatic conditions basically uh, governs the distribution of different vegetation classes in the very small uh, Uh, landscape also so with here you can see at a very small uh, uh, landscape uh, you can see uh, at least seven different vegetation communities are appeared so in the lower area the subalpine forest are there then the cromholge vegetation then the bright uh, colored denthonia vegetation is there denthonia grassland the herbaceous meadow then the subnival vegetation the cobrisia uh, uh, and the sage meadow are there and the alpine scrubs are also there so within a very short distance you will see lots of vegetation and because they are they change at very rapid scale so the mapping and characterization of these uh, vegetation is very uh, critical and very crucial also because they are the biodiversity hotspots and lot of the bio resource like medicinal and aromatic plants are uh, highly uh, used from these uh, high altitude landscapes so when case study was uh, uh, conducted in this landscape so this is the alpine area and the dark uh, patches in this uh, fcc of sentinel 2 is uh, this depicting the the forested area so these are the uh, ground sample uh, collected for different vegetation uh, that we we could differentiate physiognomically while uh, we are in the ground and these are the sample plots and 
ground truth plots collected for this uh, part of the uh, this alpine landscape and here you can see different photographs of those uh, ground vegetation uh, in the uh, the vegetation classification or in the phytosociology what we do we collect the ground data at the plot level and we do the the clustering cluster analysis so how those plots are related with each other in terms of the similarity in the species composition so this is the cluster dendrogram uh, that is generated from these uh, ground data and these are the community derived from the the uh, one of these uh, software uh, called the TwinSpan uh, two-way indicator species analysis. So these many, at least nine alpine communities were uh, derived based on the uh, ground data. So how these communities are different respectively, uh, that is important because uh, when we work with the remote sensing imagery, so the spectral variation among the ground objects is uh, important to <clears throat> discriminate and map uh, these classes. So here we will see how these are uh, spectrally uh, 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 dissimilar from uh, each other. So these are the uh, reflect reflectance spectra of the vegetation communities in the sentinel two band. <clears throat> so this is for rhododendron campanulatum. So here you can see the reflectance uh, from the blue, green, red, and red edge, the anayar, and the suit region of the, the sentinel to uh, band. Then the different vegetation, so you, you will clearly see that, that these two classes are, uh, 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 we can discriminate spectrally also. Then what are the case of other uh, classes, like the mixed herbaceous or the other vegetation? So you will see these, Classes are also uh, differ in their spectral properties at one or more uh, bands of the, the sentinel image. So this spectral information is basically useful in, in uh, discriminating the, uh, the vegetation uh, classes uh, while performing the classification on remote sensing images and also in the their uh, veg the vegetation indices or the band ratio generated uh, for uh, generating additional information from these bands. So like these, so what this, uh, uh, this is uh, then the input, all these uh, bands plus the vegetation indices were uh, provided to the random forest uh, algorithm and it basically uh, do uh, the uh, variable importance analysis. So which variable is the most important uh, in the, uh, the discriminating as well as the classification of these, the communities uh, in the remote sensing imagery. So here you, you can see some of these bands uh, like red edge three, red edge two, red edge four, then the sphere and the other uh, those uh, variables like aspect, slope, or other bands. So it shows the importance of uh, those variables. So uh, which have the most uh, of the information that is used by the algorithm in the classification. And again, you can see the spectral separability of different vegetation classes uh, uh, in the, the most uh, uh, important predictor variables that are uh, generated through the uh, random forest algorithm. So these are the uh, uh, some uh, utility of the uh, uh, random forest, uh, this classifier, a part of uh, the mapping. So it also shows how these, uh, uh, which band is most important in the classification and how they are useful in discriminating the uh, different classes of the interest. So then here you can see this is the a part of the alpine landscape and uh, we have these, uh, this uh, pulse uh, color composite of Sentinel-2 data and these are the ground uh, truth point, uh, points those are collected to train uh, the algorithm for the different classes. And this is the final output that is generated for the uh, alpine community. So these many communities you can clearly see uh, in uh, the 
true color that imagery of google earth than in the sentinel false color composite that these are spectrally uh, spectral variation you can uh, observe in this imagery also and this is very accurately mapped by the random forest uh, this uh, machine learning algorithm with very high uh, accuracy so this is basically uh, this output for the a small area and we also tested other uh, machine learning algorithm like support vector machine or the uh, the deep learning uh, the fully convolutional neural network so we compared how these different machine learning algorithm uh, perform for a part of uh, this uh, alpine landscape and uh, because this uh, fcn needs a very uh, uh, large number of training data to train the model as compared to the sbm or the rf and we found that this rf is a more uh, practical because it needs less uh, training data as compared to the uh, deep uh, learning methods like fcn or other uh, uh, machine learning algorithm and uh, within these uh, sbm and rf you can see the overall accuracy of uh, random forest was higher as compared to the sbm so this is example of a smaller area so later on we took a, uh, a large project for the entire western himalayan region so the, you can see here this is more around 2 lakh uh, square kilometer area of entire western himalaya uh, this project is uh, a uh, ongoing project and uh, with help of uh, the systematic grid based sampling approach we divided our sampling units for entire uh, western himalayan area and we have seven partner uh, or the collaborating uh, organization uh, which works on different uh, region level in the in this western himalayan landscape of the alpine area and this area is beyond uh, 3000 meter uh, up to 5500 meter elevation zone so this broad zone is targeted uh, for very fine scale of the uh, community level mapping of the alpine vegetation and this uh, uh, project basically targets uh, uh, the wall to wall high resolution maps for the dominant plant communities for the entire western himalaya so because uh, uh, if we see the earlier attempts of classification so large scale maps were uh, basically uh, at very coarser uh, coarser level so to generate the fine scale maps or the community level maps of uh, the alpine vegetation the these uh, uh, machine learning algorithms are uh, highly useful and this study target uh, the high resolution uh, characterization of the alpine uh, uh, plant biodiversity and uh, these are the sample units you can see the distribution of the sample point location in the entire landscape so this is the broad outline of the methodology how uh, we are going to characterize the alpine uh, community uh, patterns and the diversity so to uh, by collecting uh, the ground control points with the help of uh, the plot level study we acquire the primary data on the species level information and also that those plots were uh, geotagged and these geotagging of these uh, geotagged plot level information is directly comes to the and the uh, a server uh, uh, developed in the irs so <clears throat> a part of uh, the ground data the uh, standard vegetation classification scheme was generated so different vegetation classes were identified uh, based on the remote sensing data as well as the uh, the earlier studies those uh, which are on the classification of vegetation uh, so those studies were uh, taken in consideration and a proper uh, vegetation classification scheme was developed and we, uh, uh, we uh, using the sentinel 2 data uh, that is really uh, available and uh, the band reflectance as well as the different vegetation indices so here you can see the number of indices uh, generated uh, from these Sentinel-2 data are uh, used uh, in the, uh, the uh, 
classification and the variable impotence analysis as i shown earlier was uh, performed in the random uh, forest so we identify the most important predictor variables and which can predict uh, the the vegetation classes on the ground based on the training data so the machine learning algorithm we use random forest and the support vector machine <clears throat> those are available in the google earth engine platform so this these uh, the algorithm are available on different platforms like uh, snap of sentinel itself or uh, separate packages on the r so these are available in different platforms so we we are using uh, google earth engine and uh, <clears throat> based on these ground collected points we trained the uh, algorithm and also validated the the generated maps so final uh, the vegetation or the community types and maps were produ produced so we will see how uh, uh, this is <clears throat> working for this uh, larger landscape so here you can see the entire alpine region of the uh, uttarakhand here in this example and this is the fcc of sentinel 2 and here you can see the number of bands or the layers are used to to map the uh, the uh, the or the discriminate the vegetation communities on the ground so at least 21 different layers are uh, using uh, we using uh, uh, in this uh, platform and uh, these are the uh, the distribution of uh, <clears throat> two different classes the denthonia and the abij uh, pinro how the uh, the training points are Uh, distributed in the entire landscape so this is just the example of two classes uh, and as you can see the number of different uh, points generated for the other classes also so now you can see this is the generated the final uh, the outputs that generated through this uh, random forest algorithm in the uh, google earth engine uh, cloud platforms so later we have a separate class on this uh, cloud platforms uh, how we use in the vegetation monitoring so i will not uh, tell much about this so this is simply you can see from this uh, uh, fcc to the training of the model and the final outputs of the um, the this is the example of very high uh, resolution map uh, at 10 meter uh, pixel level in the ground and uh, at least 16 different communities you can see and uh, map uh, by use of uh, these uh, algorithm so these algorithm can handle very large data set large number of layers and also large number of training data sets efficiently and they uh, generate or the classify the uh, the vegetation at with very high accuracy so then you can uh, generate uh, the kind of maps so this is a very small portion of uh, this map and you can see the details of the vegetation and these are very uh, highly important in uh, the biodiversity conservation practices because uh, such maps are not available earlier <coughs> these high resolution maps are not available and these area are highly uh, sensitive to different kind of changes in the Uh, climate uh, due to the climate as well as the uh, anthropogenic pressures because the high altitude land, uh, landscapes are under uh, immense anthropogenic pressure and such kind of information on the the distribution patterns of vegetation and the species richness maps and uh, based on these maps we can generate the diversity hot hot spot maps and where are the distribution of medicinal and important uh, aromatic plants we can identify important plant area medicinal plant conservation area and also useful for uh, inputs in the biodiversity registers or the state biodiversity boards uh, their uh, uh, different uh, conservation plans and uh, this will soon available in the alpine information system and these high resolution maps can be used by the different uh, groups of stakeholders and and the other uh, users so now uh, uh, lastly we will see one of the example of the very high resolution uh, uh, data and its utility on uh, the mapping of uh, the vegetation at very fine scales so as 
uh, we know that the pixel level classification uh, cannot uh, fully utilize the special information that we gather through the very high resolution data because the canopy of the tree uh, will be uh, uh, there will be multiple pixels of very high, the high resolution data on a single uh, tree canopy so the object based classification uh, it takes into consideration the special information and some other attributes like shape, size, color, and the association. So the object-based image uh, analysis was found more uh, uh, practical and useful for the very high resolution data. And these are some of the examples of uh, the very high resolution data sets. Those are available. These are the Carto set two and three of uh, our uh, own uh, ISRO. The special resolutions are 0.6 meter in the panchromatic bands and 1.6 meter in the uh, multispectral bands. So, like these world view 2, geo, i, cube bars, so these are the example of the very high resolution data, uh, means this uh, sub meter uh, resolution. So, this is the example of the FRI campus. This is the well known area for uh, most of us. And we took a small part of this area because we uh, we tested this cartoset to us data uh, for the species level classification in this area and we know th in the campus of this FRI is uh, very rich in the uh, the species which are planted here and here you can see the cartoset to us uh, the true color uh, imagery and this is the false color composite of the cartoset to us so by tonal variation also, you can uh, differentiate different species here. So this is the pine uh, plantation in the FRI campus and the different canopy of species you can see in this very high resolution uh, data. So we took this small part uh, for uh, the testing purpose and how these uh, uh, some of data sets works uh, on the species level uh, classification. So this is the simple outline how uh, these uh, species level mapping was performed uh, uh, based on the image segmentation. So basically segmentation is the division of an image into especially continuous, disjoint and the homogeneous region. So basically those are the objects based on the similarity criteria like the digital numbers or the texture of that area. So it divides the, uh, the high resolution imagery into different segments and the image objects in these uh, remotely sensed imagery are, are basically often homogeneous and can be delineated by the uh, segmentation uh, processes. So it reduces basically the within class spectral variation. So for example, if a uh, tree has a canopy of uh, 20 meter area, so and if you are using a sub meter uh, uh, special uh, resolution data, so there will be so many uh, pixels for a simple uh, or, or for a simp uh, single tree. So in the in that case, if we are using the image segmentation or the object based uh, classification the entire tree will be uh, treated as a single object so in that case the object based classification is uh, more useful as compared to the uh, the pixel based classification so this is the simple flowchart how uh, this uh, 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 method uh, uh, is used so basically the carto set to us uh, of multi spectral imagery with 1.6 meter and this pan chromatic of 0.6 meter so image fusion resulted in the pan sharpening of the image so because we have more bend in the uh, multi spectral area so we use this image fusion techniques to generate or to enhance the uh, the spectral uh, uh, resolution of the image which, which is basically of the coarser resolution as compared to the, the pan chromatic region. So following the image segmentation in the software like the eCognition or the other packages, we generate the segmented image and we generate the crown projection area. We will see that uh, <coughs> in the next slide. And 
we uh, have to collect the the ground data points so because uh, the training of those the segments or the objects generated through the image segmentation is uh, important like the the training of the other uh, the machine learning algorithm so it trains uh, the objects instead of the pixel and it generates the the high resolution uh, maps uh, of the at a specific level so here you can see that uh, the distribution of uh, the ground truth points for the different species so these species were uh, uh, the geo tagged on the image in the ground so different image here uh, you can see and these are the training and testing poly polygons for the the species or the crown of a particular species so here uh, you can see at least 25 different species were uh, trained uh, the polygons or the object uh, for these species were uh, trained and these are the testing and the, uh, training uh, polygons and here you can see this is the segmented image uh, for uh, some part of this portion of uh, the image and uh, this is the species level distribution map generated uh, from this data so each uh, individual segment is is uh, in this image it represents a crown projection area basically the area uh, of a particular crown of a tree or a group of uh, those uh, individuals which represents the uh, the area on the ground so how much area on the uh, forest floor is represented by the canopy uh, of a particular tree that is known as the crown projection area so these are the crowns of uh, different individual trees or a group of uh, similar uh, trees and these are uh, delineated beautifully you can see here and this high resolution uh, species distribution may be generated from uh, this uh, imagery so these are uh, the example of the utility of uh, these uh, uh, tools uh, in generating the community level maps as well as the very high resolution uh, canopy level or the species level maps uh, using the very high resolution satellite data these are basically useful for the species level inventory and generating the maps uh, for uh, the the crowns uh, the crown level species and also for very high resolution biomass assessment so in this case you identify individual tree or individual species uh, uh, using the the crown and the ground training data and uh, based on certain uh, the algorithm and the relation with the the diameter of the tree we establish the relationship with, uh, with the crown and we generate the high resolution biomass map of the the particular area so these are the some of the uh, <clears throat> examples of uh, how uh, the machine learning tools are uh, useful for uh delineating the vegetation at vegetation type level vegetation community level and in the in the alpine area because uh in case of tree you can uh, visualize or you can identify the crowns but in case of the herbaceous vegetation or the vegetation in the grasslands or in the alpine area so these are very efficient uh, algorithm which can differentiate and uh, uh, map the vegetation at community levels and also if you are using the very high resolution data you can map at a species level also so you can gather the species from uh, the information at different level from the landscape to the vegetation type to the community and the species level information you can generate using these uh, advanced remote sensing data as well as these <coughs> algorithm so by concluding we can say that these uh, machine learning tools are very uh, highly efficient uh, for the fine scale vegetation characterization at uh, multiple scales and they are very efficient in handling the large data sets or the uh, data to and provide the outputs with very high accuracy and uh, useful in assessing the virality patterns at the multiple levels and the multiple scales and uh, we can characterize these fine scale uh, vegetation 
at larger landscapes with very efficient and precise uh, measurement of biodiversity patterns for monitoring and the conservation prioritization. So thank you. Uh,